it's nice. And that's definitely nice, those grasses. They kind of got a purplish, not a little bit of a purplish hue to the, what are those called, kernels? No. Seeds. Uh, today's gospel is Luke chapter 7, verses 36 to 50, and Jesus comes to the house of Simon, a Pharisee, no, a Pharisee, it says, and uh, he reclines at table, he's been invited for dinner, to dinner, to dine, whatever they call it, and a woman comes in with uh, ointment, and I just walked through a spider web, uh, uh, through with ointment, and I think it says she's, uh, or no, it doesn't say that, she, um, She starts washing Jesus' feet with her hair and her tears and kissing his feet. And um, then she takes the alabaster jar with the ointment in it and, and anoints his feet. And everyone is aghast. Everyone is scandalized because they know who this woman is. Apparently she's a sinner, it's, we're told. And... And the Pharisee says to himself, if this man is a prophet, Jesus, he would know that this woman is a sinner, the woman. And this is kind of neat. I don't know when all this started, but I like it. I like moss. I hope it's moss and not some kind of flesh-eating bacteria. Anyway, she says, uh, he says to himself, come on, Toby. If, if this man knew, if he was really a prophet, he'd know this is a sinner. He wouldn't let her touch him. There's one of those bees that bites you. One of the bad bees. Uh-oh. Where'd he go? See, he didn't just disappear. And now I don't see him. Oh, he probably went in the, under a leaf or something right there. Anyway, uh, and Jesus says to the man, so Jesus knows what the man's thinking. It ain't the first time that's happened. And Jesus responds to the Pharisee by saying, when I came in your house, you didn't give me water. You didn't wash my feet. You didn't um, give me a kiss, nothing. And this woman has done nothing except wash my feet you didn't get, he says you didn't give me water for my feet and she's done nothing but wash my feet kiss me um kiss my feet um and all of that and you didn't do any of that and jesus says which i first off i find it very interesting that jesus knew what he was saying thinking and then he it says he replied to him he replied to him from what was in his head what was in his own head he didn't reply to him because the guy said, why don't you realize he said it in his head and the guy rep and Jesus replies to him. That's an interesting phrasing. And then he says, um, he says, Simon, let me ask you a question. If two men owe the master, I think money, 500 days wages or and 50 days wages and the master knows that neither can repay it and he forgives both debts, who will love him more? And the Pharisee says, well, I would presume, I think, I suppose, he says, I suppose the one who was owed, he who owed 500 days wages. Come on, Toby. And Jesus said, I believe he said, you've answered correct. Um, he says, those who are and I'm probably going to get this part wrong. Those who are forgiven much will love much. And those who are forgiven little, I guess, or have little to forgive. Which would it be? Anyway, are going to, I guess, love less. So, um, so I guess what we, what we take away here is that 
the woman's a sinner, which means she has a lot to, for, to be forgiven for. And Jesus said you, to the woman, your, your sins are forgiven. Okay, this is back to the gospel. Your sins are forgiven. Uh, go in peace. And what else did it say? Sins are forgiven, go in peace. And then the people say, who is this who even forgives sins? And we know only God can forgive sins, so do the math, as I've said before. No, yes, no. So, um, come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. So this woman had the humility and the remorse for her sins and I mean, both were sinners the Pharisee and the Pharisee wasn't just a sinner because he didn't anoint Jesus' feet or give him a kiss when he came in the door but he's a sinner we're all sinners and yet that woman like the like the one the two tell me no tell me come come Like the two in the synagogue where the Pharisee says, the man is in the altar saying, oh, forgive me, Lord, I'm a sinner. Don't even look at me. I'm a sinner. I, blah, blah. And the Pharisee says, thank goodness, Lord. Thank, thank goodness. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not a sinner like that guy. Because he didn't realize his sins. The Pharisee had, who invited Jesus to dine had sins too. Tommy, come, come. So, um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's remember that we also are all sinners, that we need to ask Jesus forgiveness. We need to show that we're, that we're remorseful as well. I mean, not that we need to, but it should be reflected that we're remorseful and, uh, Let's pray. Let's pray for the souls in purgatory. Let's ask the saints to pray for us. We need that help. We need all that extra intercession. Tommy! Tommy! Come! Let's ask the saints to pray for us. Let's continue to ask for guidance during this election season. It, it, I'll be honest, we're between a rock and a hard place. I mean, Trump is no angel but he has some good things maybe some things that maybe aren't good I don't know and we're gonna have to wait and see if he's elected there's no telling it's gonna work out great either but if Kamala Harris is elected we know that there'll be more more abortion more pushing for abortion when what we really need to do is start understanding that abortion what abortion is the ripping apart or the poisoning, the chemical killing of babies in the womb, in a stage of human life, human babies being killed in the womb, which is a disgusting thing to say in the first place. Here, here's something beautiful and something natural and something that every human has to start from a small form and get bigger. Every uh, living thing ha usually starts big and gets small and gets bigger. And this is just one stage of human life where you're smaller than it is when you're four years old or 10 years old or 20 years old. So we really need to pray for a conversion of hearts. It's one thing to do it in the law. It's another thing to convert hearts. I think there was a day when and most people would have said that killing your baby is, is a terrible, disgusting thing. And um, now, rather for the sake of expedience, for the sake of our convenience, for the sake of um, not having to take on any additional responsibility or sacrifice, we're willing to sacrifice our children at the altar of the altar of what 
at the altar of our own self-centeredness. In most cases, of course, there's instances where people feel that there's really nothing else they can do. Women feel, people. <laughs> Women feel that there's nothing else they can do in some circumstances. Well, for the most part, we know that uh, abortion probably 80 or 90% of the time is an issue of, uh, of birth control, of contraception, basically. So let's uh, ask the Holy Spirit to come. Come, Holy Spirit, come.